Hello and good day everyone, welcome back to the show. My name is Sean David, thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, we got a very, very special guest in the house. She was April O'Neil in the original Turtles movie. Judith Hoke, welcome to the show. Hey, hey, I'm, I'm glad that I'm here and that um, so far the internet is working. I was actually here on time this time. Yes, she was. Man, sorry about last time. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even mention it. Yes, no, all we are 100% copacetic. Now, you were one of my childhood heroes. Why? Because I was a huge Turtles fan. You were the only humans in the Turtles world. Um, right. Did, did you know anything about Turtles before you were approached or knew about the movie? No, not a, not a thing. I didn't know there was a cartoon. I didn't know there was a comic book. I didn't know any of it. Um, and I was like, oh shit, man, this is like, when I first saw the title of the script, my agent gave it to me. I, he was like, just don't judge it by the title, just read it. And he was right. It was the sweetest script. And, um, when I got the part, I was shooting a movie with Robin Williams. And so I was shooting in New York and then flying on the weekends to North Carolina to do pre-production. And Robin asked me, like, where where are you rushing off to? Like, we all want to be in this movie. I loved him so much. He was the sweetest guy. And he was like, where, where are you going? And I said, well, actually, I'm doing this other movie. And he asked me the title and I kind of begrudgingly told him the title. And he lit up. He had collected every single Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comic. Wow. And he was thrilled. And I was like, oh, you know, and I just admired him so much. I learned so much from him working on that film. And he was like thrilled for me, encouraged me. And then when our movie premiered, he and his family flew from San Francisco to Los Angeles to come to the premiere, wow. which meant the world to me. And uh, so he gave me my street cred, but I knew nothing about it. And then, honestly, there were so many things that I didn't know about the film until I watched the documentary, um, which it's a documentary and it was put out by Paramount, Elliot, What the heck was Elliot's last name? I forget. Oh. But it's called um, um, Turtle Power. Yes, I can and recommend I learned, it to everybody. Yeah, you've seen it. Yes, yeah, so, amazing. And they had they had gotten. I was one of their last interviews that they got, and I learned so much about the movie from that. And I wish I'd known that stuff while I was shooting it or beforehand. Like I didn't know about the cartoon till like after we were done with the movie. What? Are you serious? serious because it was all it was for the most part it was all adults the youngest person there was ernie race jr yes, exactly who went on to become kino and he was like 16 and i think he had a little brother who used to watch it so he knew about ninja turtles but and he i have an interview on my channel with him about um uh you know his desire to work with golden Har harvest because yes. you know bruce lee was it yes for him He's such a great guy. I just love Ernie. Yeah, best, he's, he's best amazing. Guy. And the funny part was, yeah. for, for those of you who don't know, he was in the first Turtles movie and he was in the second Turtles movie. But in the first one, he was in a Turtles suit, right? Yeah, he was in a Turtles suit. He was working um, as a stuntman. And then, I mean, he's so charming and he was so adorable that they wrote a part for him. And then he became Kino, the delivery guy. Yes. Although, yes. in full disclosure, I've never seen two or three. Okay. When they kick you out of the club, you just have to kind of walk away and go, I, I wish you well. Wow. Okay. Like, we're like three minutes in into the interview, and you already shocked me like three times already. You haven't. <laughs> you have Even until today, you haven't seen a second and a third. Okay. I don't, I, I wouldn't blame you no, for the I've third never one. Seen them. Wow. Only part one. Well, they fired me. So it wasn't like you want to go and like, I'm pretty good about trying to minimize pain when possible. So it, there was no reason for me to go back and to watch the other two when, you know, it's, it totally broke my heart to not 
go ahead with the um, franchise. Okay. But they I, kicked out a lot of good people. Not, it wasn't just me. It would have been one of my questions to actually get first-hand information why you weren't in the second uh, movie, but now you're explaining it. I can tell you from, from a kid's perspective, and I think I was like nine or ten years old when the movie came, or the second movie came out, and I still remember that it bothered me not to see you in that movie because I... To me, you were April O'Neil, especially when you're a kid and and you believe everything that you see on screen. Um, right. It, it it felt wrong. Like, who is that other person? That's not April O'Neil. And I think even though I still love the second movie, not as much as the first one. I think the second one is a good movie. The first one to me is amazing. Like even watching it now as a grown man, I think that movie has so many layers and is mm -hmm. not 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 only a good cartoon uh, cartoon or comic book based movie but a general good movie and yeah. i think they 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 didn't do themselves a favor not bringing well, you back for was, the second it, one it was a, an internal struggle between um the, with the producers in the studio and particularly with Steve Barron, who was the director, who they also fired. So the movie that you saw is not exactly Steve's vision for the movie. And um, Golden Harvest had no faith in the vision that was being presented. And they were, you know, they were the 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 financial uh, backers of this movie for the most part. And then, you know, New Line came in and, and then there was more money. Yeah. But and and so um, they underestimated the audience hmm. in in every way, practically. And so not in every way, but in many major ways. And that's part of why I wasn't part of it going forward. I was very much like April. I had a big mouth. I wanted to talk about, you know, I remember having a little altercation in air quotes with one of, with one of the executive producers about the story. And mm -hmm. he said that kids only care about the fighting and, and that the, the story parts that you're talking about that make it a movie that has staying power and that yes. touches kids is the is the story it's yes. it's the family it's splinter it's the the themes of character and what what a family is what a, a strong person you know about you know don't fight from a place of anger yes you know these are really important themes Absolutely. and he said they were fluff and that kids didn't want them and to me that was the parts of the movie that so attracted me plus You know, Pixar and kids movies have learned so yes. incredibly over the years that parents are taking their children to this movie. So you must have something as well for the parents and something that will age up with the kids. And they didn't understand that. They disregarded that. And then also their, the ethics of that company were questionable. You know, they were... They, I was upset because from, there were many things that they were doing that weren't cool. But one of the biggest ones was that the stunt men, the culture of stunts and film in China is that if you are injured, um, you know, you are shown the door. It's not like there's, we're going to take care of you. You It's like you, one and done. And on our set, there were people, particularly the stunt men who played, um, Uh, Raphael. The soldiers? Uh, Raphael. Okay. Um, he he was injured when he was jammed into the the um, garbage can in Central Park. He broke his nose, so he couldn't get the mask back on. So, uh, or the helmet, you know, with all the servos and everything. So he was basically put on a plane and sent away. And people were getting hurt. They were cutting corners. You know, this is not new. We just saw it on the film Rust, where you know the DP was accidentally shot due to negligence. I don't know the full story, but I've been around movie sets for a long time. And in an effort to cut corners, safety is thrown aside. Yes. And so there were things that were going on 
that I was trying to protect myself, protect my performance and protect anybody else who could be in my world. And I had zero power. I am a woman in Hollywood. This is 1989. Nobody gives a shit, especially like a newbie. But I really was in many ways like that character. If I saw, and I still am, if I see injustice, I'm going to say it. I'm going to talk about it. People don't like that. And so it did not help me in my career or in that franchise. And Steve Barron was fired because he was trying to make a better movie and was trying to get more funds uh, to reshoot the, all that second unit stuff with the turtles when they were babies Yeah, in the sewer. That was just temporary footage. And they wanted to go back and Steve and Brian Henson wanted to go back and really shoot that. So it wasn't like on a super eight camera. So it was really the same quality of the film. And he was trying to, golden harvest wouldn't give him money. He was trying to get money for that. And when they found out, and I guess, you know, I don't know their contracts. I don't know how it all works, but I know the directors do things to get their movies made and they, they do what it takes to get their vision on the screen and it got inspired. And so his vision isn't on the screen. And I think it really hurt him because he threw his, his mind, body and soul into that film. And he did not get a good turn at the end. So a bunch of us were shown the door and it happens. I mean, that's part of being in the business. It, you just, it's one of the things you must deal with, endure, and move ahead from if you want to play in the big leagues. You know that. Sports. Like, if you're going to play in the big leagues, man, you're yeah. going to get roughed up, and you're going to have to... It Shit happens. And it's part of it. Either you're going to be in the minors or the majors. And if you're going to be in the majors, you're going to lose an eye, a leg, an arm, a job, a relationship, a whatever. It's how it goes. Yeah, it's a tough business. I think many people yeah. don't realize what kind of a business Hollywood is. It's not easy, and there's a reason why so many yeah. actresses and actors are going crazy at some point. Um, yeah. It's not for everyone. Not for everyone. No. no. And if you can endure it and last, you know, you will get some real wisdom out of it or not. <laughs> Yes. You know, or not. <laughs> so I use it to get more wisdom. I believe you. Now, yeah. before I let you go, I have one more question about the first movie. Um, the movie became such a cult classic. And especially in, in the past couple of years when Michael Bay did his version of The Turtles. Mm -hmm which were terrible. Um, the younger generation heard from the older generation, hey, you got to check out the, tur the original Turtles movie back from the 1990s. And, I, and I've seen and I've heard that the younger generation appreciates the old movie, even though the animation, it's not even animation, but it, it looks different. It's not CGI. It was all practical yeah. like it used to be. Everybody appreciates that movie. And what does it mean to you that the movie became such a cult classic that people still talk about even 30 years later? Well, we're having this conversation. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, and you're in Berlin. And that's connectivity. And that's what this movie generates. And I love that. We had no idea. Um, and... It, I did the, um, uh, I was in the second movie of the new Ninja Turtles, Michael Bay. I had done Armageddon with Michael Bay way back in the day. And uh, you were in the second one. Okay. I didn't see the second I one, was but the first one. Here's the thing. They wrote me a part and then they cut it out. And yet again, you just have to go. And that's Hollywood. You're nobody in Hollywood. You've been cut out oh, of the movie. So man. they cut it out, but it's in, it's in the special features. And, um, and they wrote a part for me and I had a blast and they paid me a lot of money and they flew me out. And I, 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 I have learned in this industry, I take, I have learned and it's been hard. Take nothing personally. 
It's not personal. This is a decision. This is a business decision. It had nothing to do with my performance. It had it had to do with whatever was going on. And again, I haven't seen the first of those movies or the second of those movies. But there's been so many iterations of Ninja Turtles from the beginning. There's been yes. different cartoons. There's been different. There's, you know, the last Ronin, you know, is that it, Ronin? Yeah, there's, uh, you know, there's so Countless. many different versions and I'm like, there's a million Batmans, there's a million spider man there's, you know, so I'm good with all of it. I do love that people go back to the first, and I think it's what we were talking about before. They go back because there are themes in these stories that are potent that we need right now. 